Alright, thank you very much for watching. Now, uh, before I begin, as you can probably tell, we're in a little bit of a different setting today. And the reason for that is in the other room, there is just not enough... Um, the lighting situation is just not good enough to do reviews like this. And um, I like to have natural light with these videos, but I'm just not getting any in the other room because it's... Uh, behind a tree so that keeps light out and I have to use my desk lamp and then in um, uh, editing I would have to crank up the lightness and the contrast of my film and it just doesn't look good so um, I have the opportunity to do it here I'm trying to maneuver around the tripod and the very little space I have to sit here so please bear with me and I apologize in advance for any um, movement of the camera um, People said to me it might be better to use a tripod for these kind of reviews because my cam videos are a bit shaky, so this is also a bit of an experiment. Uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, um, I'm a little bit congested. I have a cold, as so many people do in this season, um, so I apologize if I'm a little bit unclear. But the reason for this review is for this 1961, approximately, Smith Corona 75 Deluxe Space Omatic Standard Typewriter. I bought this typewriter for seven dollars, yes, seven dollars at the junk store in the city and believe me, uh, that is a rare occasion. Um, I used to be able to get typewriters like this for five bucks uh, years ago, but these days it's practically unheard of to find a machine in that store anywhere at all really for as little money as that. And I did not have uh, a score at all for months. The previous um, typewriter I purchased was a Empire number no. 1 from 1892. I think it was in early October and now it's January of 2017. So you can understand uh, the reason why I would buy a machine like this. And besides that, um, unlike many other typewriters that I've come across that are from this era, this typewriter actually has a very nice design to it. I'm quite fond of the way it looks. It is a really big machine, but it has, they've cared a little bit more for its aesthetic uh, or what cosmetic appearance and it does work really well. When I got the typewriter, it did not work. Um, the t I assume the typewriter has been sitting for actually quite a few decades maybe. Uh, it was completely seized up, but not because of gunk or old oil or anything, just because it had been sitting for so long. Um, the carriage spring was completely stuck the carriage wouldn't move because it, it wasn't the belt had come off or anything it was just because the the, uh, the spring had seized up from sitting for so long and it took 15 minutes of just um, pulling the carriage string in order to release it because it took a long time and it's the same with the rest of the mechanism um, the car carriage made horrible noises one of the sources came from the spring once it actually freed up and um, the other noise came from the escapement, which did not really relate to having been sitting for so long. It was the silencer uh, that is in the escapement pivot, I think it's what it's called. And uh, that had just completely warped with you. So I had to take that out. It was a pain in the butt to do so. I couldn't take the carriage off because these machines have lots of bearings. And I just do not like messing with the bearings in these typewriters. So... Um, I cursed a lot, I threw my screwdriver around a lot, but eventually it did go back in and it works very well now. But there's still signs, for some reason the carriage locks, as you can see, still need a little bit of help when trying to lock it. After a few tries it will free up and it will work, but if it sits for a while, usually um, that means I have to help it a little bit more. Uh, besides that, there was a margin uh, button missing and what you see there is I think the carriage release button for a Olivetti Linea 88 which came from my parts box uh, it's a type that I owned many years ago and I decided to use for parts just because it was in bad shape and then um, I assume it had been rubbed off but uh, the color selecting here the indicators were gone so I made one up and it looks pretty good besides that the typewriter is fully original um, it has a what let me just point out that 1961, I assume because of the serial number, the serial number here in the back, um, it says 6159-6109. I owned a Smith Corona Secretarial, um, which is very similar to this mechanically. Actually, it's almost exactly the same. 
And uh, somebody told me on that machine that uh, you can determine the date of that typewriter based on the first two numbers of the serial number. And that was from 1962, I believe. And then somebody told me the same when it came to this machine. The typewriter database does not have any information on this. So if I say 1961, it is from what I could find based on this machine. Now, getting more into the nitty gritty mechanical side of this typewriter. I'll take the cover off for you, you can have a look inside. This is the inside, as you can see it's um, kind of insulated. The reason for that is the, um, the mechanical structure actually extends only to this point. If you take off the side panels, which is very easily done, you will see that the typewriter will shrink to about this size and then down to here. It is mechanically not that big of a structure, but it's just the body that makes it so big. Um, I was kind of surprised by it because the sound padding isn't anything significant either, but that's the way it is. These are original Smith Corona factory spools. I used to have a lot of these. They came with classic 12s and uh, Super Sterlings and typewriters that I had and they have long gone by now. But uh, um, I sent those spools with those typewriters. I think, you know, it's only correct to keep them with the original machine. But I found two original two factory spools in my uh, ribbon spool drawer and I decided that they would fit perfectly on this as they did so that's what you see here um, it says Smith Corona and then it says here custom ribbon control and on the bottom of this panel it says this machine requires new SEM spools ribbon must have two eyelets so I figured let's see how original we can get this how we get can get back to this this is a little bit loose and that's because one of the mounting pins on the back is missing um, a screw. So I might get into that and see if I can fix it. Then what means space o on this machine? Well, I kind of like this. If you press the space bar normally, as you would undo when you are typing, it space, uh, advances one space. But if you press it down hard, it will advance like this. Now usually machines that have a power space like this will have a separate button for it here on the side. This is my first encounter with this mechanism and I kind of like it. It has a uh, metronome mechanism in the back that will um, regulate the spacing as you push down the space bar like that. The typewriter also has a half space here on the side. Then here is your tabulator, tab clear and tab set. You have your backspace. Margin release, like I said, two shift locks that sometimes work. I have to do a little bit more work on that. One, two, and three spacing, and a nice long carriage return lever, which I like. This has, um, well, Royal calls them magic margin. I call them automatic margins. And the system for this is a little bit different than in the other more common um, magic margin typewriters. This, in fact, does not have the long springs that run around um, the, the margin rail. It actually has a tiny um, spring drum. Um, it, it's like a smaller version of the big carriage drum that pulls um, the margins together uh, through a cord that runs through here. It's easier to explain when I have the panel off, but that's too much hassle and I don't want to get into that. Then it has the two point um, two stop uh, paper bill, your support rollers and they're in good shape. The platen is also, it's even a little bit soft still as are the support rollers. Um, the support roller rod had completely fr uh, frozen up when I got the machine so it wouldn't hold any paper. It was, well for seven bucks it's not really a gamble but I wasn't sure if that was going to work again but it does. It's still slightly bit off if you have to rotate back. Um, it does not entirely align the text anymore if you continue spacing you realize you've forgotten to write something on top so um, you have to keep that in mind and I forgot to show I don't know if you can see that but how nice that interior looks just these shiny panels I love that and it came out really nicely because when I got it it was really filthy I didn't even know they shine up that nice but it's really nice to see. And then here, if you focus correctly, here is the ribbon direction switch. 
And that's that. That's the mechanism of this typewriter. So I'm sorry I dragged this out a bit long, but I wanted to give a good indication or um, or a good. I wanted to recommend this machine because um, originally I used a Royal FP from 1958 as my regular typewriter to use. But I've turned towards this machine just because it writes so nice. And if you can find one of these, don't turn them down because they're mid-60s, office machines, clunky and bulky. This is a really nice machine to use and I do really recommend it. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and stick around for the typing sample.